start? Okay. Uh, Okay, those that don't know me, that you weren't in the first class at all, I was on posting and all that, all that good stuff. Uh, my name's Dwayne Hall. Okay. Uh, an abbreviated background. Uh, I'm originally from Texas. Don't hold that against me. Okay. Uh, moved up here to Oklahoma. Uh, I'm right there, I'm Okay. Been up here for several years. Now. Um, we're going to talk to you today about natural medicine. I learned my medicine from several different sources. Okay. Uh, one, I started following my granddad when I was big enough to be in shadow. And he'd go around to you can eat this, you can't eat this. This is wild onion. This is crow poison. This is this. You know. Um, so I had to learn a lot. In, in nature, there's yin and yang. There's always a plant that's a good plant, and there's a plant next to it that's poisonous. Okay? For example, hemlock. Hemlock looks just like wild carrot. If you don't know how to crush it, smell it, look at the flower in it, you could be eating hemlock. Now, y'all know where, what, what made hemlock famous? Shakespeare. How was, was it Rourke? I believe it one, one of them in there was poisoned with hemlock. Okay? Uh, Native Americans would take and boil hemlock down, coat their arrow tips in it so that they just graze someone, they would at least kill them. Okay? So, you know, there's there's purposes for every plant. Uh, I wouldn't suggest any kind of eating it all the time. Wouldn't do that. So I started learning from my granddad when I was real small. Uh, I had the opportunity to live on the Diné Reservation for a while. Uh, most people, that's called the Navajo. Okay? But they like to call themselves the Diné. That's the proper word. Uh, I ran along through life, and I've always been in one of these things that I've got five or six things going at one time. Okay? And I was started studying, learning things. Uh, always just, you know, just kind of eclectic to a certain extent. My wife decided she was going to go to massage therapy school, and she had to take an herbology class. She said, the only way I'm going to pass this class... They couldn't hear you. Let's see if I can do this, because I, I'm off with my hands. Okay. Uh, she said, the only way I'm going to pass this class... Is that good? Too loud? Not enough? Whatever. Good. Okay. The only way I'm going to pass this class is if you take it with me and essentially do my homework. And I said, okay. Well, the gentleman that's teaching the class uh, was actually a Cherokee medicine man. Okay? And I'm Cherokee. I'm Chilagi Nidagi, which means I'm Texas Cherokee. Okay? Uh, my folks went to Texas before the Trail of Tears. And so I said, okay. And so things kind of started off. The next thing I know, uh, I, my apprenticeship lasted a little over 20 some odd years before I was I finished my apprenticeship. Uh, people that go for a weekend and learn, learn up a herbology and say they're an herbalist, kind of, yeah, okay. So, because, you know, it was teaching over and over and over and over again, and testing over and over and over and over again, and over 20 some odd years, okay. Uh, after that, I finished my apprenticeship, and I was ordained in the Native American Church. So what I'm going to do today, I'm not going to go into the old, old Cherokee medicine. I'm going to call it more homestead medicine. Okay? If you got questions, somebody raise your hand, whatever, we'll try to go through this. And just, I just want to be informative. I can't get a lot of detail. Okay? Because, I mean, I've studied, I'm 62 years old, and I've studied this most all my life. Uh, you go, well, I'll never get it. Yes, you can. You start where you are. It's just like the old saying, you know the two best times to plant a tree? 20 years ago and today. So you start today. You start with wherever you're at, you go. And I would suggest that you take two or three plants, learn those plants, learn how they work, what to do with them, and then you can go from there. Okay? Uh, some of you noticed when I started, 
I live sage. That's part of that's part of our beliefs. Okay. But also sage, which that plant has more varieties of sage than any uh, any other plant in the world. Because you've got garden sage, you've got this happens to be white sage from the high plateaus. Um, you've got western sage. Uh, I've got a gentleman up on the Platte River that, that sends me sage every once in a while that they call it grandfather sage that we use in the sweat lodges. And so they all have different smells. Okay, now you go to West Texas and you get some of the West Texas wild sage. Uh, I don't burn that a lot because most people think I'm smoking dope. Okay? Which I, I, I have no, I'll tell you all this, I have no problem with cannabis. If taken right, cannabis is a wonderful, wonderful plant. That's with any plant out there. Okay? I will also tell you this, don't ask me about wild lettuce. Because I'm not going to teach you about wild lettuce. Okay? And if you know what I mean, but if anybody knows about wild lettuce, you know exactly what I mean. Okay? I'm not going to teach you about wild lettuce. So we're going to start off. Uh, if you're new to this, there's levels. Okay? I'm also a wild crafter. It means I will go into the wild and I will find these plants and pick these plants. You've got to know what the plant looks like in every stage of its life, when to harvest that plant, how to prepare that plant, how to dry that plant, how to make whatever you're going to make out of that plant. That's a whole other thing to learn. Most of you are just going to do some herbs around the house. And the best place there, you know, there's Pioneer Herbs. That's a good place. Um, my favorite, if I'm going to buy something, is I like Mountain Rose Herbs. They don't, they, they don't sponsor me, okay? I'm just telling you, I like them. They're very ethical. They're organic. And they will not buy from a wild crafter if they do not know that wild crafter and where they got it. I remember a few years ago, I was driving down Highway 20, and there was just tons of echinacea down the road. Purple coneflower, okay? And there was people out there, and they were digging it all up, every bit of it. Okay? That is a no-no. I don't care if it's on the side of the road. One, I would not use an herb off the side of the road. There's too much contaminants, too much pollution, everything else. But they were taking every every plant, digging every plant up, and I know what they were going to do. They were going to commercially sell it. Okay? How about this? Is that better? Oh, we're going to learn this. How, how, somebody goes, just like this. If here. Um, the pollution is one. One, they did not do that in an ethical manner. Okay? And they were selling that. So you've got to be careful where you get your herbs from. Um, so he goes, oh, I got so and so to sell over here. Well, you don't know where they got it. Okay. Also, in our belief, it's when you when you go out to collect an herb, you find the first herb. That's great. Plant. You find the second. That's great. Until we find at least four, we will not harvest. And when we harvest, we harvest from the center of that root because it'll reseed in the center and reseed on the outside. If you harvest from the outside then you limit it into a space. <laughs> we will not take more than a fourth of that, what's there. That way you ensure that for future generations. You also got to think too of all the other animals that are out there that they use these herbs as medicine as well and we won't be taking from their life force. Okay? So, books. If you're wanting to learn the different plants and what they look like, a good place to start are these two books right here. And they happen to both be Reader's Digest. Now some of you folks that are older know exactly what I mean when I say Reader's Digest. But these are put out by Reader's Digest. Some of the best identifications I've run across. Okay? I like using these books. Don't go out there and try to learn 50 jillion different herbs and try to identify all of them and everything else. Okay? You're also going to notice that you don't hear me talking about the scientific name. Okay? Yes, I studied Latin in school. Okay? Latin is a lost language, and I think it's a lost language for a reason. It's too dead gum hard to pronounce all the words. Okay? And the other part of it is, I don't care what you call it. 
I've heard people call echinacea, purple coneflower, snake root, whatever. I've heard them call it all different names. Unless you have a relationship with that plant and you know what that plant does, knowing the scientific name does you no good whatsoever. Okay? Are, do you understand what I mean? You don't know that plant. So you want to get to where you know that plant. You want to know what it does. You want to know how to use that plant. Uh, this Peterson's Guide is, is a pretty fair little guide also. You're doing that. Some of the other books, and I have, I have literal, probably from this wall down to those pens, bookshelves that are just lined with books. And I would say I've probably gone through 90% of them. Some of my favorites is, I like this herbal drugstore. Okay, I picked it up. I don't know if you can still get it. You might scan the little barcode thing in it and find out. Uh, medical herbs, this is a good one. If any of you guys follow it, does anybody raise your hand if you know who Rosemary Gladstar is. Okay, now I know who the people that know about herbs are. Okay, because if you know Rosemary, have you taken any of her classes? Watch videos. Watch videos. Classes? Okay. So you met her in person, got to visit with her? No, I just did the videos. Videos? No. She's a wonderful person. She's a really good herbalist. There's another herbalist out there, I won't call her name, that has a little school and I, and I wouldn't give you two cents. Okay? Matter of fact, uh, she posted something on Facebook last year about making elderberry syrup. Everybody make the elderberry syrup, right? And, and she put sugar in it. And I called her out on it. Sugar is an immune suppressor. Okay? You should not use sugar. You should honey. And she was teaching everybody about using sugar. And I called her out on it, and she avoided it all. That, that the whole thread went away. Okay? Uh, so it's just, you know, you don't tell people what they want to hear. You tell people what's wrong. Okay? Rosemary, wonderful, wonderful person. She's got some great recipes. She's one of the very few people, authors of books, that you'll find on men's health. I look around this room, 80% are better are women. Okay? Now, granted, usually the women were the herbalist. Okay? Not to say that men couldn't be, but the women were generally the herbalists. They were more in tune with the plants. Men... Also, you don't see a lot of things written on men's health. You see a ton of books on women's health, but very few written on men's health. It's because, guys, I'm going to chastise you. We will put up with crap and hurt and hurt and hurt and know we got something going wrong forever until it gets to the point it is way too bad. Okay? Men just won't say anything. Women will talk to other women. Okay? I got this little problem here. Then what do you think? Guys won't do that. Ah, oh, yes, work through it. It'll be all right. Okay? We need to be more conscious about our bodies. Okay? Because this is your temple. This is what's carrying you through this lifetime. Okay? Again, I told you I'm 62. I'm on a volunteer fire department. I got a bunch of 20-year-olds, and they do their best to keep up. Okay? Uh, we've gone through, and I'm not saying I'm the greatest help, not, you know, I mean, yeah, I got a little extra on me, but when we train with Tulsa, we have to go through their health check. And I go down, and I sit down, and take your blood pressure, take your pulse, so you can go on, you know, make sure you're okay. And we're going through it, and I'm, I'm, first time I'm there with Chief, and we get through, and he comes over and goes, wait, wait, I forgot what, Chief, what blood pressure medicine do you take? And I'm going, what? And what blood pressure medicine do you take? He just went right through the health check. And I go, Chief, I don't take blood pressure medicine. I don't do that. Why? I said, because I don't need it. You know? Good. I don't need it. Okay? If you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. One of the biggest things is to eat good. I'm not saying you got to eat tofu. But frankly, I would not eat tofu. I was a vegetarian for 25 years. I quit because all soy now is either GMO or has to be sprayed with pesticide. I was eating these little fake hamburger patties and thought I was just being a good child, okay? And finally, my body built up a toxicity to it and it was like a mule was continuously kicking me in the gut. And I couldn't figure out, I, I, I can't figure out, I was hurting. I mean, I was hurting. 
So I went to another friend of mine that does medicine work, and we found out it's the dang I'm sword beans. That's what's causing it. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm a vegetarian. You know, I'm good with this, you know? So I laid off of it for a few days, and I said, I don't, I don't, I don't quite know if he's right or not. I'm going to try it again. I went back to him, and I had to listen to it this time. Because he gave me the by far. Okay? I quit soy. Men, you do not need to be drinking soy. Genetically altered, pesticide-driven, and it is an estrogen mimic. Okay? Too much estrogen, and you'll start singing a little lucky for too hard, and other things will happen. Okay? So, lay off of it. The next book, if you're very, very interested in, in, in medicinal herbs, is alternative medicine, we'll say, is Dr. Christopher. <coughs> you may know who I'm talking about, Dr. Christopher? Dr. Christopher is probably the forerunner of all natural medicine. I would suggest you get this book, read this book, you'll find out why we have medical doctors today and not alternative medical doctors today. Okay? Um, we lost that fight, but we're coming back. Okay? But this is a good book here. This is if you're if you're really interested, if you really want to get into it. Um, if not, it's 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 not one of the highest one to have person. You don't want to do that. Okay? Alright. Now we're gonna go back in and talk about why herbs work. I need to give you a baseline to start from and an understanding. Okay. Disease. Disease is the body is at dis-ease. It's not at balance. Everything in your spiritual life, in your in your emotional life, we should always strive to achieve balance. Are we going to get perfect in balance? No, we're not. A ship is never 100% on course. An airplane, any of that. But we need to work toward balance. So when we have disease in our life, and when I say disease, everybody goes, oh, I don't have any big fungus growing off of me. No, disease is a lot of different things. Stress is a disease. It is a body at dis-ease. It's not at balance. Okay? Several different things cause that. But think of it this way. On this side of the scale, you got negative numbers. On this side of the scale, you got positive numbers. And what you want to achieve is those two to balance out. But when you have disease, you have these negative numbers over here. And what you want to do is you want to introduce things into your body that are positive numbers that bring it back into balance. Now, I'm going to amaze everybody with my next statement. Herbs do not heal. Okay? Second thing, there is no such thing as a healer. Okay? Let's go back to the first. Herbs do not heal. Herbs allow... We've got so much noise everywhere with the chickens, it's really hard to hear. Okay. Here. Herbs, can you hear that now if I get it up here close? Okay. All right. We'll do that. Like this? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm so, usually I'm so loud mouthed I never use one of these, so I'm, I'm, this is different for me. Herbs do not heal. They allow your body to heal itself. Your body is an amazing, amazing organism. As a matter of fact, it is a whole society of organisms. And I forgot to tell about this in the class earlier today. If you were to scrape every bacteria off you and in you, there would be over three pounds of bacteria the size of your brain. You are part of an ecosystem for other living life. Now, some of that's good, some of that's not so good, okay? We need certain things, though. The second thing, there is no such thing as healers. Oh, I'm going to go see a healer. There is no such thing as a healer, okay? There's a person that can help you facilitate healing, but they don't do it. Everything we get comes from the Creator, okay? One shape, form, or the other. Whether it be the plants that help us, prayer, meditation, whatever you want to call it, but it comes from the source. Okay? All I'm doing is teaching you how to facilitate that and what I do. 
Yes, I take a little more spiritual approach to what I do because I believe everything is based in that. Okay? I believe that every disease is a physical manifestation of a spiritual issue. People say, well, I got a cold. That's not spiritual. Yes, it is. You stress yourself. That's where most people get a cold from. Okay? <laughs> different diseases are caused by different emotions and things in people's lives. Okay? Uh, there's extensive research on that. I've, I've got quite a few of them. Somebody can tell me, oh, I got so-and-so wrong with me. I'll go back and look at my list. Boom, boom, boom. What about this and this and this going on? You're like, oh, how'd you know that? It manifests. That's what it is. That's what it comes out as. Okay? So, let's go through some of these herbs and how they work, what we do. Um, let's see. First thing, first thing first. Those of you that are taking notes, or that, that are healing, that, that are listening to this, taping it or whatever, um, there's a thing called the seven healers of the world. And if you were going to learn seven things, seven things to use, these would be the seven things that I would suggest that you start with, okay? Number one on the list, and it should be in every home, is apple cider vinegar. <laughs> it helps lower your pH of your body. Disease grows in an acidic environment, so when you lower the pH of your body, you get rid of a place that gets disease can live. The other thing that'll do it that I like, lemon. And you think lemon's got acid in it, it's gonna make my body uh, acid. But when you eat that or take it however, it actually causes your body to become alkali. So apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar with the mother. It needs that little floaty stuff in it, okay? You gotta have that in there. The second thing, and I was talking to some folks earlier today, Boom, right here. They got all the seasonings out here. Capsin. Cayenne. So many things it'll do. Someone's, you know, if you got a tincture, let's just say you got a tincture of cayenne, somebody's having a heart attack, put five or six drops under their tongue. Stop a heart attack. Okay? You get a cut. Bleeding. Hurts. Grab cayenne powder. Slap cayenne powder in it. Stops the bleeding. Now it'll burn like a, for a minute, and then it quits, and then it doesn't hurt. You know how I know that? Been there, done that, bought that T-shirt. Okay, it works. It helps lower blood pressure. It helps clean the blood. I, mean, I can go on and on and on about the things of capsin, cayenne, jalapenos, anything with capsin in it. Okay? I am, no, I am not going to be going around eating any California Reapers. Okay? Sorry. Okay, that's a little much for me. Okay? But cayenne, yes I will. Jalapenos, I'll do that. A few ghost peppers every once in a while when I'm feeling froggy. Okay? The next one is bentonite clay. Some people call it living clay. Now there's two types. There's calcium bentonite and there's sodium bentonite. Sodium bentonite Women, it's what the main ingredient is in most of your face masks. You know, you get that little stuff that dries and crackles and all that and pulls all the stuff out? That is sodium bentonite. Calcium bentonite, sodium bentonite, you do not want to take internally. Okay? You get a little, but not much. Calcium bentonite, you can take internally. It will tie to heavy metals. It will also detox your body of heavy metals. Okay? It's... All kinds of things on you. Poison oak, poison ivy. I put calcium bentonite, fries it up. I mix it with a little bit of everything. Like, you know what Virginia creeper is? Yeah. Okay. Leaves a three, let it be. Leaves a five, let it thrive. Okay. Mash it up, mash it up, mash it up, mash it up. You're going to go, that guy lied to me. That She said that stuff would get juicy and it's not getting juicy. Keep mashing. Just keep mashing and it'll get juicy. Put that on there. Get rid of that poison ivy. It may take a time or two, but get rid of it. You notice they grow together. Okay? The antidote always grows where the poison grows. Okay? The other plant that works there too, you should find it. Gene Creeper is a lot easier, but jewelweed. You know what jewelweed is. All right, the next one, 
and all the Italians in the group are going to love me for this, garlic. Garlic is one of the best things. Eat garlic. Lots of garlic. Garlic in everything. Garlic in the seasonings. Garlic in this. Garlic in that. I don't care what it is. Put garlic in it. Garlic infused honey. Make an infusion. It's really good. Okay? Now, if you're using like, garlic uh, or, 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 or garlic infused honey, don't, any of these herbs that I'm telling you, all the herbs, do not put them in boiling water. Do not boil them. Simmer at the most. When you go to boiling, you start changing the molecular structure. If you're going to put that garlic honey like in your pasta, give it a little bit of sweetness, put a little garlic in there, do it right at the end. Okay? Mix it up in the end so you do not overheat it. The next one, I've already told you this one, lemon. Lemons. Limes also. The lady that was out here early this morning, how many of you went to the fermentation class? Oh, man, that is a healthy way to live. Fermented foods brings the probiotics back in your system. Most people, their probiotics in their system are shot. So you need lots of fermented foods. Apple cider vinegar helps in that also, but fermented foods are great for that. Okay? Oh, okay, okay. Since we're there, essential oils. Oh. Everything has a purpose, guys. But I see lots of people out there, they, they went to this multi-level marketing and they say, oh man, these essential oils, you got to buy all these essential oils, you got to take all these essential oils, they're great, they won't harm you, you know. And what do you take? Well, I tell you what, I want to stay healthy. I, I, in my glass of water every day, I put two drops of oregano oil. Now, show your hands if you've ever taken oregano oil straight. How many days did you taste it? <laughs> and you consistently burp it. Okay? Our oil of oregano is one of one of the essential oils. It's my go-to. I don't buy the cheap stuff. I go to the health food store and for a little bottle this size, I pay 90 bucks. If you go to buy it, buy the good stuff. Don't buy the cut crap. Okay? See, if you got if you got a cut on, used to ticks never bothered me. Okay, I'd pull them off, no big deal. You know, go on. Now, if I don't get them off in time, they make a little a little cyst, like, and it'll it'll get well, and then about a week or two later, it comes back up again. But I have found is the moment I pull that tick off of me, if I put a drop of oregano oil on it, it goes away. Okay? So it's really good for any kind of skin infections, things like that. Now the challenge with this is if you're taking that oregano oil in your water every day, oregano oil is antibacterial, right? You just killed all the flora in your gut. All those little good bacteria and microbes that run around in your gut, you just annihilated them. No wonder you're having intestinal distress. Okay? That's why most people are having these issues. A good rule of thumb, one cup of tea. This happens to be lemon balm that I picked this morning. It has wilted, okay? And, and lemon balm, like right now, it's, it's up, but it doesn't have a lot of essential oil in it, so you barely do get any, any smell out of it. But if you were to take this and make a cup of tea, let's consider that one unit. If we take and we make a tincture. And I'm gonna to explain to you what a tincture is. A tincture is like 10 cups of tea. If we take an essential oil, it's 80 cups of tea. Do you see how you could get way too much in your system really quick? Yes, most essential oils really and truly should be used on the external or in the air. You'll be surprised how much you will pull in just from breathing it. Okay? So let's don't go out there and get all crazy and have 100 different essential oils and I'm taking all of these. My buddy in Wisconsin, I sent him herbs and tinctures and stuff. He's got a child that's a CP child, cerebral palsy, and they have a very delicate system. And he was telling me, oh, man, I'm doing this. I'm putting these oils. I said, you need to be very careful. Be very, very careful. He called me one night. So I don't need you to pray. I go, what's the deal? He said, well, we got lights in the hospital. We don't know what's the doctor, don't know what's wrong, we don't know what da, 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 da. He called me back the next day, he said he's doing better, da, da, da. he said, uh, I nearly overdosed him on essential oils. His system can't take that. Okay? 
And uh, I said, yep, T's are what you need to give him if you're going to give him anything. His system is so delicately balanced that you need to be very careful about that. You have children. If you're going to give children herbs, especially when they're small, don't give it to them in the mouth. Rub it on the bottom of their feet. Put it on their navel. Those are the two places the body will absorb it. Okay? So, uh, that way you know you're not distressing their system and the body can absorb it at the rate that they need to. All right? So now we've talked about the body being at dis-ease, what we need to do to bring it back into balance. So now, let's go in. Oh, 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 I'm going up. The Italians are gonna love me for this one too. Olive oil. Olive oil, okay? It has so, I mean, making salves out of it, infusing different oils, infusing different herbs. Olive oil is a great medium to do that with, okay? I have a question about that. How do you know that it's actually pure? I'm olive not oil? best at hearing, so. Olive oil, how do you know that it's actually pure and not mixed with other things? How do we know anything nowadays with stuff? Because this label says this, this label says that. What you cold pressed is gonna be your best, okay? And you're going to have to find a reputable dealer or company that you can get it from that you know is telling you as best truth as they can. You know, if I'm going to buy this for, for medical purposes and stuff, I'm going to, I'm going to Mount Lowe's Herbs. That's where I'm going to get it. Okay? Or someone that I know is, uh, like the town I used to, uh, that I grew up in, they actually have like an oil shop. Okay? And they bring in oils from all over the world, olive oils and stuff from different regions and different kinds and stuff like that. I would be okay because they're like a connoisseur of all of it. And they would know what I would be getting. Uh, when you're getting any herb or any material, you do you, there's, there's cold pressed, there's steam extracted, and then there's chemical extraction. I do not like the chemical extraction. I would rather go cold pressed at any time. You're gonna pay more money. That, that oregano oil I've got is cold pressed. It's expensive. That's the first pressing that comes out of it. That's the good stuff, okay? Now, and you see some something's extra, 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 extra virgin oil? Okay, well, then every time they put another virgin in there, that means they processed it down some more, okay? That, that's just like uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup is a wonderful, wonderful medicine. But most of you are eating grade C maple syrup. If you're doing good, you're a grade B. But if you want to be healthy, you should be eating grade C. That's the first run that comes out of it because it has more vitamins and minerals in it. It's less processed. The more you process anything, the less you get out of it. Okay? So, if you want to do that. The next one is salt. Here's the story on salt. You don't have enough salt in your system, you'll go into cardiac arrest. We have to have a balance in our system. It's, it's called sodium pumps. That's how it works. Now, they go mine salt in the ground. They pull this salt out. That salt is nothing more, guys, than seawater that's been captured there for generations and generations and it's dried and has some great stuff in it, right? And then they take it over to their process center and they process all the minerals out of it. That's why it's quiet. And then they decided, you know, people are having some health issues. We might ought to put some iodine back in this stuff. And so they, oh, I bought salt with iodine. I did good. You should have just bought regular sea salt or whatever to begin with, and you'd have all the other minerals in there to begin with, and it wouldn't be processed out. Okay? I like sea salt or Himalayan salt. Okay? Now, some of that stuff you can go in there and... How much gold do you want for an ounce? You know, on some of them. But if you look around, you can find good salt at a good price. Okay? So do that salt. I'm going to add another one to this list. Make it eight healers of the world. Okay? Or actually, I'm going to add two more. One of them's not an herb. I'm going to add two more. Um, elderberry. Not that I have a huge elderberry orchard. But elderberry. I've got people tell me, oh, Dwayne, you got to boil them elderberries. You got to boil them. Can't eat them raw. Well, I'd be dead. 
because I grew up as a little kid pulling them off the bushes and eating them. Okay? The challenge here is most people go buy them, they buy dried elderberries, and they come from Europe. And they have a high cyanide compound in them. So therefore you have to heat them up. What I tell you when you heat stuff up, you do? You change the molecular structure. The American black elderberry has less cyanide compound than apple juice does sitting on the store shelf. You can eat them by the handfuls. Raw. Doesn't hurt you. I don't cook nothing. Okay? You put them in there. Elderberry, we'll, we'll go into that later. It's so many different things. It's great, it's great, it's great. And for those of you that are really into elderberry, I'm going to tell you, the flower is ten times stronger than the berry. Much more potent than the berry. Now, it doesn't taste as good as the berry, but, you know, yes ma'am. What's the proper name for the American elderberry? <laughs> you guys, you're going to ask me to say something Latin, aren't you? Yeah, because I want to make sure I just follow the right stuff. <laughs> Negro, Sabucus, yes, or yeah. something like okay. that. Okay. All right, that's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but it's if you want the American black elderberry. Okay? Because there's even like light pink ones and stuff like that that you get from different places. Okay? All right. Oh, I got one more, right? <laughs> Anyone know what this is? Where did that come from? A silver generator. A silver water generator. High tech. High tech for those in the back. Okay. Twelve gauge silver. You want the 99.9999999999% pure. Okay? People say, oh, you just take a silver coin and do this with it. Don't do that. Because a silver coin is not 100% pure silver. You're going to leach out all the other metals in it. Spend the money. Silver's not that expensive right now. Buy a coal of it. These last, oh, these are brand new ones because I finally, after six years, I ate up the other set. Okay, that's a lot of silver water. Now, people can, but you can buy the little generator that tells you this and that. No, I don't do that. I'll make it simple. I take nine volt batteries. Okay, I put them in series. I put four of them together. So nine times four is what? Thirty-six. I went to public school, so thirty-six volts. Okay, alligator, alligator clamps little mason jar plastic lid okay you don't you don't want metal okay you don't want that plastic lid metal clamps this is like that 14 or 16 gauge lamp wire that you get at home depot okay i mean this whole setup probably costs two bucks okay the battery's the most expensive thing these little rods see the little l on them at the top they clip right into the alligator clamps. You want to get them as close as you can together without them touching. And probably a straight little line, okay? I just hook her up and let her run for 24 hours. Now, my silver water is a lot stronger. Most of it. You go to the health food store, you're going to get it at 15, 20 parts per million. Mine usually runs 150 to 200 parts per million, okay? How do you measure that? How do you measure that? I'm making it. Yeah. How, do you measure, how, do you measure? how to measure it? I've had, I've had it tested, but the way I measure it is a thing called muscle testing. Okay. That's a whole nother class. Okay. You're getting you're getting a lot deeper when you get there. Okay. Your body, your body, since you brought it up, your body will tell you what you need and what you don't need. Okay. There's no other test that's as accurate as your body is telling you what it needs. This lady sitting over here on the side over here is a friend of mine. And uh, she does body work and, and acupuncture and stuff like that. We work on each other from time to time. And, and she'll tell you, muscle testing works, doesn't it? 
income. So what's the benefit of silver water? What's the benefit of silver water? How many hours we got? Uh, <laughs> World War One or World War Two? I don't really remember which. I believe it was my, probably was one. It's been used before then. But all the soldiers carried a silver coin in their canteen because it killed viruses and bacteria. For a long time in the hospitals, they made silver water up and they sprayed everything down with it as a disinfectant. Okay. Now it will. It does. It kills bacteria. It kills viruses. You know, uh, what I brought today, I didn't. I, for, I was trying to get all this stuff packed up, and and I, I missed a bunch of things. But I brought a tincture of peppermint. Okay, because I went, had to go. You know, sometimes it happens. It's probably my genetics on part of it. I had to go get a tooth crown thing you put in a tooth, right? And the dentist says, "Oh, you got to be using this mouthwash right here. We'll write you a prescription for it." You know, well, the first one I first went in, she goes, "We're going to write you a prescription for antibiotics." I said, "I'm not going to take it, and I'm not going to buy them." She goes, well, "What do you mean?" I said, "I'll go home, start taking my chickweed, my silver water." I went back. She goes, "Because I had a little bit of a sinus infection." Yeah. She goes, "Well, it's gone." I said, "I didn't use your antibiotics either." Okay. So she tells me I need to buy this mouthwash. A little bottle of this mouthwash is like thirty bucks. Okay. And I said, no, I'm going to buy that. She goes, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm making my own. She goes, how are you going to do that? I said, well, this is peppermint. It's tinctured with vodka. I add silver water to it. I have a nice, refreshing mouthwash. They'll kill anything. And you know what? Good thing about it is, if I want to drink it, I can drink it. <laughs> if the morning ain't running right, I just take two shots. <laughs> okay? So, you know, guys, that's just the way I live my life. Okay? What she wanted to sell me for 30 bucks, I probably made for 50 cents. Okay? I, you know, I'm not a peony pincher. I tend to be frugal. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Gather up your grandma's silver and you eat with that silver. Was, is that if you if you gather up your grandma's silver and you eat with silver, does that help yes. us do the same yes. thing? Yes. Well, why do you think the old saying is they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth? Okay. The folks that had money used silver. The folks that did not have money used pewter, which has lead in it, and no wonder they were dying. Heavy metal poisoning. That's the difference. You're right. Yeah, you should eat with silver. You should drink from a silver goblet. Okay? Uh, history has proven these things. So why do they no longer why do they no longer use silver in, in a hospital? Why do they tell you, oh, that stuff don't work, not a quick critical? They did it for years and it worked. It's because now we can write a prescription for antibiotics of which you can't make. And they can sell to you. They can get a patent on it. Do you know they actually have been trying? They've been trying to outlaw herbs that you grow in a garden that you can make medicine out of. That way you can't make your own medicine. There's also, I was in Idaho a few years ago and there was an ad law going around that they were talking about how if you are growing your own garden, the government at some point, they have some right to come in and take it. And it's, it, this goes back to you know, time of war and the government limiting, you know, hey, give up meat for the troops and all that junk, but it's one of those things. But it's not only it's your, going in the law, so don't not only your garden, they can walk in your house and take any resource you have for the benefit of others. So pay attention to politics, even though we don't want to talk about them, we need to. Yeah, you, you don't want to get me started on that part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a crusade I can stand on the talks about for a while. Okay. That's why I do these things. Now, let's talk about things you make. Tinctures are made with alcohol. You're going to have two sources of alcohol when you're making a tincture. If you use a wet herb, in other words, fresh, you use Everclear. If you use a dry herb, this happens to be calendula, you use vodka. Okay. Vodka is 90 proof. 
Y'all know where the word proof came from? The sailors on the ship, years ago, part of their pay was in rum. Well, the people decided they would stick it to the sailors and water the rum down so it would go further. The sailors got to where they'd pour a little bit of rum out, put a fire to it. If it burned, it was proof. If it didn't, it had been watered down. That's where the word proof came from. So, vodka is essentially 45% alcohol. Or 90 proof. Everclear? Y'all ever burn Everclear? Nice, pretty little flame. I used to backpack a lot. About four or five hundred miles a year. That's what I cared for fuel. I cook with it. I disinfect with it. I can have a good time with it. Okay. It had three purposes. The reason you use Everclear when you have a wet herb is because that herb already has water in it. You're wanting that mixture to be about the same consistency of water. Now, for an example, this is chickweed, natural antibiotic. Okay. When you get, when I get through, you guys can come up here and look at this chickweed. And if y'all will be careful, I'll let you pass it around. Please don't drop it, okay? Because it has actually been tincturing for over a year. I collected this last year. Okay? But you can see how the essence of this plant has been withdrawn from it. All you see is a translucent plant in here. And you can see the tincture, the, the tint of the uh, Everclear in it, okay? So I'm going to hand it. Y'all pass it. Please be careful with it. Okay? I start on a new moon. Okay? Some people, oh, I don't care. Well, go ahead. That's all right. I castrate animals. I castrate them by the moon. I do the signs. I plant a garden. I plant by the signs. I dig a post hole. I plant by the signs. I do everything by the signs. My granddad proved that to me a long time ago. It works. When you go from a new moon to a full moon, that's called the waxing, it expands. That's why we have tides. Going back and forth. The moon has a huge just effect on the earth. I mean, all kinds of things on the earth. Okay? So, it expands the herb. When it expands the herb, the vodka or the Everclear moves into the herb. From a new moon, excuse me, from a full moon to a new moon is the waxing, it's the drawing part. Okay? And what it does, what you just infused into that plant, now draws the essence back out. So all of my herbs are at least 28 days. Okay? That one happened to be a year. I just put it up, I look at it every so often, I go, you know what, this is a good piece of class with, I'm just going to leave it. Okay? This, this is elder flower. Okay? I may pour a little bit out of this. But this is probably the most precious tincture I have. There was a lady, Miss Jackie. Does anybody know Miss Jackie? From Wild. Yes, ma'am. Wildcracking. From Wildcracking. Yes. Um, I met Miss Jackie a year or so before Miss Jackie passed. She's a Cherokee medicine woman. She taught a lot of plants. I met her. She and I hit it off just like that. And do you happen to remember the last walk that she had where she had a select group go and you had to write a paper to go to her on this group? Well, she had that. And she was going to teach her grandmother's formulas to just a few people. And I told her, Miss Jackie, I want to go. I want to go with you. I said, I'll get my little paper written as to why I should be able to go. She goes, you don't need one. you got to see. I said, Miss Jackie, I'll do what you ask because I, I need to follow what's told. She goes, no, you're going to help me. And I'm like, Miss Jackie, you're so far above me, okay? I got there, I gotta tell you this story. I got there, I got there late, I was running on Indian time, that's the way it always runs, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and I said, oh, she goes, oh, I'm glad you're here. I said, I was running late, Miss Jackie, I understand, I know that, you know? And she said, I said, I'll find somebody to ride with. She goes, no, you're riding up front with me. So I got in the, I got in the Suburban with Miss Jackie, and we're driving around. And she said, you find them, I'll talk about them. So we're driving down all these dirt roads, and we're finding different things here and there, and stopping and talking, and 
And they go, what about this, Dwayne? And I, I go, Miss Tate, you're supposed to be teaching. She goes, I want to know what you say about it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> when an elder tells you that, that's what you do. Okay? Wonderful day. Wonderful day. We went back. We had a potluck. Uh, we had a friend of ours pass away that was native. And her family asked us to take all, all this stuff. We took her medicine stuff and we, we gave it to the right people. And then everything else, we do what we call a giveaway. That's just kind of the, you, you pass it out. So I brought a lot of her things to Miss Jackie's meeting to do a giveaway. We did, Miss Jackie was just so pleased to do a giveaway. That was on a Sunday. Tuesday morning I got a call that, yeah, Tuesday morning I got a call she was in the hospital in a coma. That was the last thing I ever got to do with Miss Jackie. I harvested these flowers while I was with her. They were touched, they were not touched for over a year in her honor. And this is Miss Jackie's formula, okay? Honor your elders, okay? So that's the best way I know to honor her. And if that lady in the back knows Miss Jackie, you know that, okay? So, all right, where were we before I got off of that? Okay, I did good, I didn't cry that time. Tinctures, <laughs> Tinctures, okay. Um, here's what I do with the, 28 days, and at 28 days, we're ready to process that tincture. You could go buy fancy stuff to extract it. This is homemade. This is my herb press. Anybody work in a restaurant? Silverware. Okay. One fits right inside the other one real easy. Okay. This happens to be screen printing screen. They do they do screen printing. Buy it new, clean it up. I put that in it. And I usually put a natural bandana inside that. I pour these herbs on the inside. I cut a little circle out of a cutting board. Okay. That goes up on the inside. I stick this in and I just keep screwing her down and she mashes everything out. And then I just take the pour it off in a bowl. And then I save my vodka bottles, okay? Blue Sky, if you're gonna use vodka, use Blue Sky, because you got a blue bottle. Because the color blue is a healing energy, and you wanna keep it in there. You wanna keep all your herbs in colored bottles. Amber is great, blue is better, okay? So I save them my blue bottles, I pour it in there, and then when I go to pour up tinctures, I'll pour it up in, I think this is a two ounce bottle or a one ounce bottle, whatever that somebody needs. I'll do that, okay? It's real simple, right Ivana? Yeah, I broke it. Don't mess with her. <laughs> she broke this piece of this hard stuff right here, screwing this thing down, so y'all don't mess with her. That's what it is, that's, that's tincturing. Now, if you're gonna make an extraction, you can use apple cider vinegar. The difference between the two, let's say somebody has had an alcohol situation in their life and don't want any alcohol in their system, there's two things they can do. Uh, they, can, they can put a tincture in like boiling water or heat it up a little bit and it'll dissipate the alcohol out of it so you're just getting the tincture part. Or you can make it with apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, when you make that same process, is only gonna keep two, maybe three years, okay? I really don't know how long a tincture. They said that they found some of that stuff in some Egyptian pyramids is what they say. But I know it will keep a long time, okay? 10 years, easy, okay? I like that, it's on the shelf, I don't have to worry about it, done. Because I want a tea, I want, I want, a, I want a cup of tea, great. I'll fix you some hot water, drop, 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 okay, here's your tea. It's done. So much easier for me that way. People come to me, it's so much easier for me to mix up what they need in bottles or just a bottle of this, a bottle of this, and a bottle of this. Take this, this, and this, because in two weeks, they may not need the same amount per herb. That's muscle testing. I go back and test that again, okay? Because your body may need one thing right now. In two weeks, it may need something else, or it may need it in a different concentrate, okay? So, that's tinctures. Extractions, same way. You can also use, uh, for kids, for example, uh, I use lobelia 
A lot of times that's the active ingredient in nebulizer, the natural ingredient in nebulizer, open up the bronchial tubes. Okay, for children, uh, if I don't rub it on the bottom of the feet, if they're a little bit older and they need that, I will make a, uh, an extraction and I will use vegetable glycerin. Sweet, kids like it, okay? Uh, I also use blackberry brandy, uh, golden seal. It may take from golden seal. I ain't got a brain sold in the bunch, okay? It's nasty. <laughs> oh, God, it's nasty. Okay? I mean, I'll take just about anything. Yvonne knows that. And, man, I, I cringe when I take golden seal. Now, it's even better if you use it externally, but it, it does work internally. And I usually make it with uh, uh, blackberry brandy. It's a lot easier to get down, okay, because it does taste terrible, okay? Now you can get into things like... Uh, Oh, well, okay, let's talk about elderberry syrup. This, this, wherever I put it, it's not, that's peppermint. This is the elderberry tincture. You can make elderberry syrups. Do you use sugar? No. Good. Okay, honey. Okay, honey. Because honey also has all of its other properties. And when you use honey, you want honey from no more than a 50 mile radius of your home. What gives honey that little color is the pollen. When you get that honey that they took the bees to California and put in the almond groves, that's a totally different ecosystem. You want honey from naturally. So my elderberry syrup is just elderberry juice, 50%, honey, 50%. I don't cook cloves in it. I don't put a little bit of cat tail. It's just elderberry syrup. Okay? Now, I also, this, this next year, I'm going to be making something different. Y'all know what sumac is? Okay? We got smooth sumac here. Y'all had sumac tea? Oh, man, it's like, it's like pink lemonade. It's great. Extremely high in vitamin C. I'm going to make sumac elixir. Essentially sumac syrup. Cook it down. I'm going to put a third, maybe a third, I don't know. We'll run the numbers out if I taste it. Sumac, elderberry, honey. That should be one kick butt for me. Okay? I would have made it last year, but I didn't have any sumac last year. It didn't bloom, didn't come out, and therefore my bees didn't make a lot of honey. Sumac honey has a light citrus taste to it. Really good. Really good. Are you just putting the sumac in the honey like you do the garlic? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, not wash this. I shouldn't have said boil it down. I'm gonna simmer that sumac down with a little bit of water and just keep concentrating it, concentrating it, concentrating until I get a nice little syrup, and I'll put that in it. That's what I'll do. I also make an ox meal, which is one third elderberry syrup, one third honey, and one third apple cider vinegar. Okay. It is wonderful as salad dressing, okay? But it is good for you to take, okay? Two o'clock. So they got a it's something to tell me time. I do. Two. What? Two o'clock. Oh, my time's up, isn't it? Okay. So that gives you a little bit of stuff. Hopefully, one of these days, you know, we can get together. Let me let me just ask all this because I'm working on a, a teaching homestead farm. It's what we're going to be putting in on ours. Um, would y'all be open for classes? Yes. Yeah, this stuff. Yeah. Okay. If, if you're on, if you're on uh, Red Feather Farms on Facebook, I'm Red Feather Farms. Okay. On Instagram, I'm Red Feather Farms. Okay. Follow me on there. You'll see all the little baby goats right now. You know, you'll see stuff about the bees, um, all that kind of stuff. You start seeing stuff about the elderberries. And when I get some more things done, it'll probably be this fall. I'm doing a whole remodel inside the barn. We will hopefully be able to uh, start some classes up and get more detail. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you guys for braving the heat. Thank you. Thank you.